I was having a look across the map the other day and I saw this. So I had to come and have a look. Sorry about the rain noise. We're under a brolly today, which means I haven't got my stick. So uh, not great in the wet, but there you go. I can't have a brolly and a stick. Uh, that's the River Flit. I'm just crossing over. So you know roughly where we are. We're um, just behind me, back facing westwards there, is Canehoe Castle. And looking down the river there, that's going towards Shefford. Uh, now today's already gone horribly wrong in one sense because I wasn't planning on actually having a proper walk today. Um, I just wanted to go and visit somewhere, that little danger area, and have a look around. Now, I'm not sure what's going on, but on the map, on the OS map, it does seem to show that I can approach from the woods up there and uh, drive almost all the way down to this feature that I want to have a look at. But when I turned up there, there's soldiers all over the place. They didn't want to let me through. So uh, I said to him, well, do you get people walking up there? Because it shows public footpaths. He said, yeah, you do get people walking up there. But he knew nothing of a footpath, clearly shown on the map, that was going up there, going up their road. So anyway, there was, there, there's other footpaths that run north to south. So I've come down and joined it from the south. It's about a mile there about a mile back from where I parked in the lay-by but uh, at least it's it's uphill there and downhill back so that's always a little bonus now what I'm hoping to find just up beyond those woods ahead is the site of what used to be known as the elephant cage and it was part of RAF Chicksands uh, now RAF Chicksands wasn't a uh, not an air base with runways and that sort of thing, as far as I know. It was, a, it was an intelligence and monitoring and navigational site where they had this thing that was known as the elephant cage. And it was a massive, great big array of, uh, well, aerials, I suppose they must have been. This great big array of aerials in a huge circle that looked just like a, looked like a big steel stone henge or something. Here, have a quick look. And you can see why the place has sparked my interest, because when I noticed that danger area marked on the map, and I went straight to the satellite image to see what was going on, I saw this. Now that's got to be looked at, hasn't it? Uh, it was also something to do with Bletchley Park. Because old Bletchley Park, the Enigma code cracking site, is only, I don't know, maybe not even 10 miles just west of here. And uh, RAF Chicksands, where we're just about to go, was used as a sort of periphery, per periphery site for Bletchley Park. So it was a really important site throughout the Second World War. Um, these big elephant cages were, were dotted all over the country. And I think they made up a network known as the Iron Horse System, the Iron Horse Network, uh, which was mostly to do with navigation, I think. Although what else went on there is anybody's guess because of the involvement with Bletchley Park and these big elephant cage antenna arrays they look like they probably do a little bit more than just help with navigation. Now after the Second World War, I think in 1950, it was handed over to the US Air Force, who continued to use the site right up until, I think they, they closed, they, they stopped using it in 95, and the elephant cage was dismantled in 96. Uh, no, I definitely don't want to go that way. Yeah, here we go. I was headed a bit uh, a bit eastwards there. I wanted to head north, and this, this is going north. Um, this is all looking a bit MOD, isn't it? That's uh, hopefully this one that goes north up the side of the woods should take us straight to the point where we want to be. Well, there we are. Definitely wandered into the right spot. 
I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be looking out for red flags or what. I know that elsewhere, these areas that are marked as danger area, will have a flag system. But, uh, right, if you see any red flags, let me know. Right, so back to the point, yeah, it went over to the, uh, went over to the Americans, the US Air Force, who used it up until the mid-90s. But then, oh. But then uh, the, uh, the array was dismantled, and the big round patch of land that it used to sit on is now a, um, it's a shooting range, it's a rifle range. Oh, here we go, look. Just as I said those words. Now, which way? Obviously this way. So exactly what goes on in there these days, I don't know. Maybe not many people do, to be honest. But it is all certainly, they've got proper, proper armed soldiers at the gate. And they don't let you go down the main track. And there's a, a firing range marked as a danger area, so they still use it. Who knows what for? I'm all steamed up, that wasn't very easy. All that mud down there. Warning, sudden loud noise. And armed troops use this training area. Stay on the footpath. I think I might. That up there looks like the type of bank that gets shot into, doesn't it? There's warning signs all over the place. It's very obvious where I'm not supposed to go. I can't see any flags out whatsoever. And I can't hear any uh, can't hear any firearms going off. I'm seeing lots of these little things dotted around. I've got a feeling they might be clay pigeon launchers or something like that. Now that's the bit in there where I think that's where the um, oh, it's a deer. Too late, lost it. I think this is where the um, where the elephant cage stood. In this bit here, I'm just going to keep. Obviously, can't go in there. I'm just going to uh, follow the footpath where I can and see what we can actually see. Um, I just trod on a, a pigeon there. Not a. Pigeon. Uh, pull! <coughs> Pigeon. So maybe that's what those things are. I've just turned round again already because I can't see any yellow markers ahead of me. Although I went in the direction that the last yellow marker pointed me, I couldn't see any ahead. Uh, don't really want to be messing about too much here, do I? <laughs> Well, it definitely says I can. Okay. I'm seeing lots of these concrete platforms all over the place. And it did occur to me that for such an enormous, obvious military feature sitting in the landscape that was here during the Second World War, how the hell was it not bombed out of existence by, uh, by the Luftwaffe? Well, it did make me think immediately, this place must have been very well defended. So maybe, maybe they had anti-aircraft guns dotted around the immediate area. I can find all of that out um, because there's a museum, which not surprisingly isn't open today. It's the bank holiday immediately after Christmas. Um, but there is a museum, which I'm definitely going to go to soon. I see a yellow sign. All good, I'm not going to get shot at. Uh, yeah, that museum looks excellent. Um, it's called the Museum of, I think, no, the, uh, of the, the Military Intelligence Museum. And uh, I had a very, very brief look at their website. It looks great. They've got proper reconstructions, little models of what it all looked like here. And also, they've got some really decent weapons in their collection. Uh, 
Oh, that's nice, look. Very considerate of them. I'm quite surprised, actually. <laughs> um, yeah, they've got weapons in that museum that I'm itching to see. They've got an original Fairburn Sykes. Uh, I've got one of them, but a modern reproduction. They've got uh, some famous generals, German generals sword in there. Uh, and they've got a collection of um, homemade improvised guns that were taken from the IRA. They've got a collection of them in there. I'm itching to see those. Uh, only problem is that place is open Tuesday to Friday, 10 till 3. So it will have to wait until I've booked a, uh, a Tuesday off work. But that won't be too far away. I'm itching to get in there and have a look. It looks great. Yeah, there we go. Look, it is a it is a red flags place. Obviously, they don't put safe flags out when it's safe. They just put the red ones out when it's dangerous. Oh. Okay, let's have a quick look. Right, I'm not going to push it with the walk-in. It seems to me that I have actually passed the elephant cage now. It was those big banks that we passed on the way in. So I'm not going to push it with the walk-in. I've, uh, I've done a good mile to get here. So uh, any further I go is double back, isn't it? So I start heading back. Looks like I can't actually get into the big, the big circular enclosure. I think we've got a little tributary of the flit running down here. Must be. Yeah, it's, it's basically up there. It's up there, which is prohibited. But as we walk back, you'll get to see those big banks from the other direction. Right, it looks like I can go this way as well. So maybe, maybe we will get to see the, uh... oh, yep, I think we're just coming on it now. Well, here you go then. This is the site where the elephant cage once stood. It's so tempting to start wandering across there and having a look, but I'd better not. It looks as though the footpath doesn't go off up there. The footpath turns off here to the left which is the opposite direction of the car. So let's just stand here and have a quick look. And pretty soon we'll, um, we'll, get, to, we'll get to the museum and you can see a really nice little model that I've seen on their, on their website that shows the layout. And it looks just like an enormous great big steel stone henge. It must have been pretty imposing to stand next to. That rain's getting heavier, isn't it? Oh, and if I sound a bit croaky, uh, I'm not ill. I don't talk that much, to be honest. These videos are the most talking I ever do. Uh, and after Christmas Day, with the nephews and nieces, I just talked and talked and talked far much, you know, much more than I normally would. And it's made me lose my voice a little bit. Of course, all this has reminded me of Bletchley Park. Seems like a very obvious place to go. It's not far from home at all, and I've never been there. I'd love to go and have a look. So that's a, that's a few little bad weather videos I've got lined up. I'm gonna be meeting Lawrence, Lawrence Walker, who's a, a local subscriber. And he knows a lot of the places I go because he's, he's a motocrosser. Now, uh, Lawrence is gonna meet me there at some point soon so that we can go and have a, an explore in that tunnel at Sundon Pit. Uh, I think you need, you really want two people to uh, go and explore that just in case. So I'm going to go and have a look at that with Lawrence. We've got the, uh, the Military Intelligence Museum somewhere off in that direction and uh, Bletchley Park. So that's a few decent ones to have a look at there. Plenty to look forward to in the, uh, in the really bad weather through January and February. Right, it's all downhill now. Very slippy, very muddy, but it's all downhill, so fingers crossed I'll get back to the car in one piece. Um, I'm really, really looking forward. 
I'm really, really looking forward to that uh, museum. Oh, Christ. Right, this isn't easy. It's muddy and slippery. Uh, I need to put the camera away so I can put my umbrella away as well. Right, I'll see you later. Take care. Every time I see the crow's foot, I expect it somewhere to say, oil the joints.